Good morning. Good morning. And happy birthday, Grandpa. <laughs> First reading is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here, here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen is whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. I will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. If you screed, he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See the one things that have come to pass, and if not, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Psalm 29, I have verse. Ascribe to the Lord the gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Lebanon Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying for glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people.
He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this morning comes from the third chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 13th verse. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John the Jordan, to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, I have a theory that no matter what a person's name is, even with all the care that's often taken when a child is named, that there is some way that that child's name can be used to make fun of them. For me, when I was uh, uh, in like uh, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, um, especially in kindergarten, we went and stayed, at, uh, we had a half day kindergarten, and then we'd go and stay at a neighbor's house down the street for the rest of the afternoon. And the uh, neighbor had a, a, a son, and the son did not like me. I didn't really think they liked him either. <laughs> that was a way street. But he would call me Buckley. And at that time, my everybody called me Bradley. They, we had not shortened the brand. Now you know why it became Brad pretty fast. But they called me Buckley all the time. And which I didn't like. And even now, today, even now, my sisters occasionally will bring that up and chuckle and laugh. I didn't think it was very funny at the time. And then as I went into uh, school a little farther, I had a, a hard time saying my R's and went into speech therapy for that. And so I started getting called Elmer Fudd because I couldn't say my R's properly. And you know, now that I've gotten older, I'm sure I get called much worse names <laughs> than some of those things. But you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Maybe some of you were called hurtful names in school, whether you were younger or older. Maybe you've been called not so nice names, not. Those kinds of things stain us, and and they often stay with us for, for a long period of time. Whether we've been called a jerk, or ugly, or fatso, or weirdo, or a thousand other terms. Those things just, they kind of stink. Because, unfortunately, what happens, I think, for some of us is that we get called those names over and over again, our identity gets wrapped up in it. We start to see ourselves by that name rather than the name we've been given. You know, identity is important because identity often denotes relationship. And here in our gospel reading for today, we see Jesus come to the River Jordan to be baptized by John. Jesus is about 30 years old. He spent his entire life in the town of Nazareth. He's trained as a carpenter, worked under his father, and that's how people know him. Jesus of Nazareth, Joseph's son, the carpenter. But when he gets to the River Jordan to be baptized by John, he doesn't need a baptism of repentance, which John is doing for everyone else gathered there. Jesus is sinless. No, when Jesus is baptized, it begins a new identity. Because as Jesus rises out of the water, a voice from heaven says, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus has been given an identity as the Son of God. And publicly, in front of all those gathered there who heard that voice, know that this Jesus is no longer Jesus of Nazareth, no longer Jesus the carpenter, but it's Jesus I love it. He will be a prophet. He who will be a Messiah for the world. 
You know, we, when we come to the waters of baptism, when we came as babies, we too were given an identity as a child of God. That's why often in many traditions when they come to baptism, that the baptized is given a new name to denote the new relationship, the new identity that they've been given as a child of God, sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Yet so often as we go through the years, we forget that we've been named and claimed by God in those waters. And we wrap too much of our identity up in the names that people call us, and the image that people want us to be. Instead of remembering that we are first and foremost children of God, forgiven sinners, that we are wrapped in the promises and love of God, and that is the greatest identity that we have. But so often it's the last that we think of and the last that we hold on to. Because no matter how many names people may call us, no matter how many barbs people may throw at us, God looks upon us as his precious child and loves us no matter what. No matter the mistakes that we've made, no matter what anyone else thinks of us, God looks upon us as that loving parent who loves us no matter what for all time. God looks upon us and sends us his son, his beloved, to show us that we're beloved, that we're important, that we are I'm not alone. Brothers and sisters, you are children of God. And because of that, your identity is wrapped up in a God who cares and loves you no matter what. You are children of God, and that means that God has a relationship with you. God cares about you each and every single day, every moment of every day. Your joys, your sorrows, your successes, your failures. God is there to bring you life and light and forgiveness and salvation in his name. So no matter what they might call you, whether it's ugly or jerk or nerd or fuckly, <clears throat> most importantly, you are called a child of God, saved and redeemed by the Messiah and beloved, Jesus Christ. And that's the most important identity you need in life. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen.